Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. You can go to live in Japan, but you cannot become Japanese. You can go to live in Germany or Turkey or France, but you cannot become a German or Turk or French. But anyone from any corner of the earth can come to live in America and become an American. Welcome back to A Nation of Immigrants, a bi-weekly talk show program featuring the life of immigrants, diversity, and inclusion. Every episode, we invite renowned immigrants come to the show to share their life stories, their immigration adventures, and their reflection on cultural diversity. Today, we are very honored to have a Professor Chiang Fang from the University of Minnesota Duluth to be with us. Welcome, Professor Fang. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Mr. Wang. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yeah, we are extremely honored to have you here because you are my favorite historian. You received <laughs> your PhD in history from the State University of New York. Yeah, at Buffalo, yes. At Buffalo. And yeah. you are an expert of Chinese history. And uh, you specialize in legal history in China. Yes. And because I'm, by pure coincidence, I'm also legally trained. I'm extremely interested <laughs> in your research and your work. And you have pretty active in the academic community. You are the president of Chinese uh, social scientist in the United States. Mm -hmm. And you are the former president of Chinese historians in the United States. We are very yes. honored to have you here. And my, my first question is, um, I remember you told me you came to the United States in the year of 2000. That's the same year I came to this country. And could you <laughs> share with us your immigration adventure? How did you uh, come to the United States as a student, as a researcher uh, in the year of 2000, please. Okay, thank you, and I'm Mr. Wang for the, uh, this uh, uh, invitation again for this chance to talk to uh, yeah to uh, to be in a program. I came to the United States uh, in 2000, and as a uh, doctoral student, uh, because and. Uh, but the dream to come to the, to study in the United States uh, has been an, uh, has been a long and a uh, dream and for me in uh, I think that most of students in the 1980s and also uh, cherish the game uh, the dream to come to the United States as the United States is the most powerful country and uh, still yes so and uh, I I went to the uh, uh, went to went to the University of Buffalo the reason is uh, Biggest biggest reason is that I got the full scholarship, a five year and a scholarship from the university. That's uh, pretty my cool. Handful, yeah, yeah my handful of university I applied because uh, application fees are quite uh, expensive at that time. So I chose only the cheapest uh, right, university to apply. So UB and uh, that's uh, the acronym of the University of Buffalo and they uh, gave me the full scholarship and they are very. I uh, impressed of my uh, by my uh, experience as a worker and a business and a businessman and also a, a journalist and, and that's why I went there. But uh, at first I applied for the University of at Buffalo as a to study in American history because my master uh, degree in China is also in American diplomatic history and I'm a specialist on Woodrow Wilson and 20th uh, oh. president of America. Yeah. And his uh, foreign policy towards China, Mexico, and other, uh, and uh, World War One. So that's his. Uh, but after I came to uh, arrived at the University of Buffalo, my dissertation advisor in the field, uh, Professor uh, Roger Default, he's a main specialist, and he encouraged me to uh, change my uh, uh, like a major and a field and to Chinese legal history. Hmm. That's why I moved. Uh, yeah, shift my major. And I tend to and uh, love that and, uh, <laughs> that's a major and uh, a new direction. That's a uh, Chinese legal history. But uh, then because of my, I published an uh, article and, uh, in 2002, just two years after I arrived and then I published several books and on that topic. Mm. Uh, so that's his, uh, I came, then I, after I graduated in 2006, I 
yeah, worked temporarily at the university in Southern Missouri. Then I came to uh, uh, UMD in uh, mm -hmm. 2008. Then since then I <laughs> well, in Minnesota. both both Alo and uh, Duluth, we were pretty lucky to have you, and uh, we're very lucky to have you on the yeah. OM faculty. And because your your research is so interesting, and not many, I think your advisor uh, 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 made the right decision, mm -hmm. and to suggest you to change your major from Woodrow Wilson to to Chinese legal history. Because okay. as far as I'm aware of, there are not many uh, scholars or researchers in the West specialized in Chinese legal history. I, mm -hmm. I can probably name less than 10. And I have, uh, I collected some books about Chinese legal history in English language, but I think it's a highly specialized area. And uh, what, what, what do you see? It's a, it's a very well established uh, discipline or it is still uh, developing? Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, there, uh, there were a handful of, uh, a few of uh, American scholars in Chinese legal history. That's why I was uh, stepping into this uh, field. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't have time to talk, name some of them. But uh, uh, the legal history of China, that uh, remains a very popular uh, field and uh, in the United States and also and, uh, in China. And uh, so, mm -hmm. Uh, the reason I like this in a field, uh, probably because of a grant I got. Uh, so because <laughs> our, uh, as a historian, I want uh, uh, like a doctor and a, a scholarship uh, <laughs> was not uh, very higher compared to an, uh, like an engineer and you know, or biochemistry and uh, those students. So I I I don't I didn't have any money in the summer. That's why my advisor and I and uh, applied a joint. Joint a program uh, like a grant from the uh, from the law school at the University of Buffalo. I oh, see. So that's why, and uh, yeah, since then uh, the grant came from the law school, I had to and uh, do some research on Chinese law. Mm -hmm. So that's my first time to uh, to to do and uh, some research on uh, Chinese law. Then after I yeah published my first article, I yeah I found that uh, well this field uh, just as you said and before that's very few and uh, scholars uh, have done this. Field, so I uh, then and I decided to write my dissertation on Chinese and a uh, petition uh, system. That's mm -hmm. a shang like in Chinese. Yes. So uh, yeah, so that's my first first book, kind of published in 2013. I spent almost 10 years on, on that book, and uh, that's uh, well, <laughs> that's uh, uh, the well, beginning of my research on Chinese law, and, right? Well, it's a fascinating, you know, the petition <laughs> system. It's very hard to explain that to uh, a Western audience. It's a yeah, part of yeah. the current administrative system and have a unique characteristic and have a long uh, historical background. Anyway, let's, uh, uh, because we are in the uh, discussion of the legal history in China, <laughs> and I have to quote my, uh, uh, some of my favorite historians, mm -hmm. like uh, Professor Jiang King Fairbank and Jerome Cohen, uh, at yeah. NYU, and uh, in summary, the these uh, old school Chinese studies experts in the United States mm -hmm. have this impression, and uh, they put them in writing, which says Chinese legal history is mm -hmm. penal and administrative in nature, and developed very little civil and the commercial law. Would you agree? Yeah, I think that says, uh, that's the argument first made by, oh, I forgot the, yeah, the, the, uh, that's at uh, Cambridge, and that's a historian at Cambridge. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I forgot his name, and that's his, uh, yeah. But and, uh, he, in his book, and, uh, that's uh, the Cambridge History on Chinese and uh, Science. I think that's I the book is, uh, oh, Niden, yeah. Joseph yeah, Niden. Niden, yeah. Yes. So Niden, yeah, he published, uh, he argued that uh, the Chinese law is a kind of a penal law, just uh, includes in a punishment. Then he saw, since then, uh, his argument has been uh, uh, criticized by uh, uh, legal historians such as uh, Philip Pong, and also uh, another one is uh, William Alfred uh, at Harvard. 
So and they argue that Chinese uh, uh, Chinese law in uh, in history in the dynasties also and contain uh, civil law, right? Mm -hmm. So not just a uh, penal law. So uh, they give some uh, examples and uh, well argued and uh, uh, well resourced uh, 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 argument on that. So I was uh, yeah, influenced uh, uh, pretty much by those and argument. Mm -hmm. But I yeah, but my field are a little bit uh, different from them. But uh, mostly my research on, for example, like on uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, petition system and also Chinese uh, uh, law and power. Right, that's also an uh, yeah, that's uh, intertwined with their uh, arguments, and uh, there's uh, share lots of uh, arguments. I cite a lot from their arguments also, and uh, I met some of them, and I uh, totally agree with them. And uh, that's uh, Chinese legal legal history is uh, fascinating, and uh, yeah, it's not uh, as simple as uh, some historians like kind of Joseph Nida and uh, uh, have uh, have argued, right? Yeah. It Thank you so much. It's uh, that's quite informational and educational. Let, let's change our gear a little bit, a little bit. And uh, I understand you are leading a new research program, Chinese in Minnesota. Yes. And we have about, uh, I, I think the latest number I have is about forty-five thousand Chinese residents in the state of Minnesota. Oh, really? Uh, so and uh, that's 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 quite a grow. It's a yeah, it's yeah. we become uh yeah. we're not getting the critical mass yet, but we are we are uh, keep growing. Mm -hmm. And so so keep, please tell us about your your project. Uh, why you want to do a uh, do a research project on Chinese re, Chinese in Minnesota? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for the question. I think uh, it's an. Uh, Came to my uh, came to my uh, attention and uh, of this project as uh, goes back to uh, probably 2017 when when you were the first and uh, right editor of the uh, Chinese uh, historical record uh, historical record of Chinese uh, Americans. So yeah, I became the yes. second uh, editor in chief of that uh, uh, kind of an, uh, <laughs> journal. I don't want to see that journal. What's an online collection? Then I, after editing and uh, uh, dozens of uh, articles on Chinese Americans, I, I want to, uh, yeah, I, I want to uh, write a, uh, a book on uh, Chinese uh, Minnesotans, and because I read the book and uh, published before, uh, probably in the 1990s, early 1990s, and on uh, Chinese Minnesotans, but that book and, uh, is uh, com uh, compared to today's, and uh, I was thinking that's is outdated because it covers only and uh, Chinese Minnesotans from the early 1900s to the late in the 1980s. And most of those and, uh, uh, Chinese came to America before 1990. As you know, and many other people know, and uh, uh, they came mostly from Taiwan, Hong Kong, and some other and, uh, China, uh, Chinese and uh, speaking uh, uh, regions like in, in uh, Indonesia and, uh, and, uh, and uh, South, South, Southeast Asia. So, but after 1978, China opened its door to the West again. Then that's a more and more and a Chinese from mainland China, like us, right? Came here yes. and study, first to study. And then we stayed and settle our family here and raise our children here and, uh, and work here, right? And uh, make kind of, uh, Minnesota as our home. So how about those Chinese? And they are more and a Chinese, I think probably around 45,000. Uh, Chinese Minnesotans, maybe a uh, majority of them are, are people uh, like us. So how, who is going to write uh, their history about their uh, stories of study and working and uh, settle down like a uh, family raising and in Minnesota? So that's as I, I proposed that kind of book project on uh, Chinese Minnesota, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then I, I'm still applying for a grant uh, from the Minnesota and Historical Society, but I, yeah, they are still at the project they're still in, in the review. So after the grant is uh, approved, then I will start. To, uh, it will be approved. Okay, yeah. If I were the historical <laughs> society, I would definitely prove it. it it's, a, <laughs> it's such a, a heartwarming and also a significant to hear you to right. say that, to record our own history in the state of Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minnesota is uh, getting uh, uh, well known for some, you know, not just two uh, good reasons, but uh, the people in Minnesota, and particularly the first, second generation Chinese, either from the mainland or elsewhere, and we have become the part of this 
cultural uh, landscape in the state of Minnesota. I very much look forward to working with you and very much look forward to reading your research paper. And please definitely uh, include yourself in this book because you are very <laughs> one of the very pioneers to uh, teach and research history in the state of Minnesota. Uh, and, and that's definitely uh, worth noting. Uh, yeah. I personally am a big fan of history. When I was a kid, a teenager, mm -hmm. I really, really wanted to become a historian, but uh, I just uh, do not have the intellectual capacity mm -hmm. and the perseverance to do that. But anyway, I still very much enjoy reading history and either fun fiction or nonfiction. But mm -hmm. I do have a quick question for you. If time travel permits, and you can travel back to one of the old ancient dynasties in Chinese history. Mm -hmm. Which dynasty would you like to travel to and be settled there? Oh, now the coming question. back, now the coming back, get the, <laughs> be, become a, a, a resident of that dynasty. Which one? <laughs> I think that will be a tragedy for me. Because <laughs> I, I know, I know. But to of get, the dynasties. <laughs> hypothetically. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that uh, as far as I, my research uh, uh, tells me that is that uh, yeah in my first book and I I, I cover uh, covers and about two thousand years of Chinese petition system mm -hmm. from as early as the Zhou Dynasty and until the today China oh. today so that is a uh, but after I uh, finish the that uh, book I my heart tends to be in a in a very in a cold and my my mood is uh, tend to be in a very and a pessimistic, because and for uh, about two thousand years, seems like uh, those uh, petitioners, right, mm -hmm. Shanghai, right, farming was or whatever, and uh, 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 people, uh, people uh, called them and in, in different dynasties. Their uh, stories are almost uh, the same. You see, yeah, go if you go back to the two, uh, like a Han Dynasty, early Han Dynasty. You can find those petitioners uh, kneel down and to the emperor. And uh, if you go back to 2010, or even today, and uh, yeah. some petitioners are uh, still uh, kneel down to the, to the officials. And, uh, so in that regard, I think uh, just uh, the history and, uh, of those petitioners and also the political system in China, uh, about the, yeah, not much uh, uh, changed. So if I, you want me to go back and uh, travel back and, uh, to some of the dynasties, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. Yeah, for me, if I have a choice, I would not go there. You would not go. Yeah, that's that's. that's that, I understand. <laughs> that's a super, you know, uh, smart answer, and I I totally agree. Uh, the implications. Uh, there was a a couple of historians, uh, Professor Jin Guantao and Liu Qingfeng, mm -hmm. and they published. Uh, they they concluded the Chinese history is a super stable system. Mm -hmm. And so echoes what you just said is uh, for okay. for thousand years history okay. it repeats itself uh, very little change, but but now let's let's uh, take a broader mm -hmm. view, and not only Chinese history but world history as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three of my favorite quotes about history I'm going to share with you. I uh, share with you uh, with you early. And I want to hear your comments on these, uh, these quotations on history. The first mm -hmm. one is from Benedetto Croce, an Italian historian. Mm -hmm. And he said, all history is contemporary history. The second one is from George Orwell, the uh, mm -hmm. British novelist. Mm -hmm. And he said, who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. Those two quotes are about narrative and the postmodernism, you know, history is a narrative and uh, we can be changed and can be rewritten. But the last quote, my favorite quote is, is from contemporary, very pessimistic, unfortunately. It said, those who do, do not study history are doomed to repeat it. Yeah. Yet, those who do study history, like you, Professor Fong, mm -hmm. are doomed to stand by helplessly <laughs> while everyone else repeats it. So I eager to hear your comments on these general uh, comments and the general uh, generalizations of history. 
Well, that's what I think that uh, those comments are genius, is it? Genius comments. And uh, I think that those uh, people uh, who uh, have not to know too much about the history will not make uh, those uh, comments. Uh, those people I can see. And uh, that's, uh, yeah, I like all the comments and I totally agree with them. And like uh, take the question, like uh, those uh, who don't history are doomed to repeat it. Uh, that's true, you see. I think that uh, uh, as early in the Tang Dynasty and the Tang Taizong, the second emperor of the Tang Dynasty, he uh, just uh, make a metaphor uh, as a uh, to uh, as a, making a history uh, as a as a mirror, right? Yeah, yes. three three mirrors, and a history yes. is one mirror. Because in a, a studying history, we allow a person to understand and know better about the fall and the rise of a dynasty, former yeah. dynasty. But also, uh, his talk is very, uh, his metaphor is very, very popular in China. But uh, those dynasties and, uh, still have not been changed, right? Exactly, exactly. And the reason I think is uh, they seeing like a conscientious historians, probably maybe I'm one of them, and I hope uh, I'm one of them. You are. Conscientious, right? Historians said, uh, we understand the problem of history, but we got no power. Mm, <laughs> but yeah. those uh, politicians were rulers. They have the power, probably they don't have much interest in history, or those are the politicians or rulers, they have uh, do have interest in history, like the Mao Zedong, for example, right? He's a uh, very good, uh, he likes uh, reading history, and uh, like Sima uh, Guangs and Zhu uh, Tongjian, he read uh, many times, but uh, tend to uh, forget history or disregard uh, those lessons and, uh, that's in history, well, when they are facing the real and uh, practical and uh, Critical uh, decisions or problems. That's why uh, history will repeat itself, and uh, that's uh, right. We yeah, cannot. And <laughs> history repeats itself, and we learn from history that we do not learn from history. Well, yeah, it's uh, yeah. we, we don't want to add our interview with a pessimistic note, but uh, <laughs> I like I like to get to the lighter topics. Uh, and when you when was your last time in in, in China? How long you have been away from the Yeah, that's a, yeah, like uh, many other uh, Chinese, right? We, uh, last time I went back is uh, 2019 to, uh, and with my family, we visited the tomb of my late uh, father, oh. who died in uh, just 2018. So we went there. Yeah, that's it. Why? And uh, yeah, since then, that's because of the pandemic, and uh, we have not been, not been able to uh, go back. But uh, once China is open to, uh, uh, to other countries again, I probably and I will go back to see my mother at least. Oh, so you haven't seen your mom? For yeah, a, yeah, for, uh, for yeah, three and uh, almost four years. I'm so sorry. So uh, just imagine where there are millions of Chinese mm -hmm. living outside the mainland, and because yeah. of the, the 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 pandemic policy in the past mm -hmm. few years, you know. Most of the people have never had a chance to see their loved ones, their yeah. family and friends. Yeah. And some of them even have, didn't have a chance to see the, for the last time. And mm -hmm. uh, their, their family member passed away. It, it's just such a, such a tragedy. And uh, so we wanted to, uh, to, to go to, uh, to change to a lighter topic, but obviously we're getting even more heavy topic. <laughs> let, let, let's do have a lighter topic that uh, we normally conclude our uh, interview uh, with two general questions. The question mm -hmm. one is if you were giving some advice to a younger you in your, 20, in your early 20s, so what would you say? If you are able to meet a 21 mm -hmm. years old a Chang Fang, what would you say to, to yourself? <laughs> wow, that's a really nice and a question. I, uh, those are, uh, those are uh, young people in India, 20s, just like my students, right? my students. And I. Exactly, so, Generation uh, Z. Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. much of the, yeah, I, I think the best advice that I give to them is uh, to uh, study harder and uh, stick to one discipline as much as they can. Mm -hmm. Just uh, they don't. They don't need to like me, right? Because I have changed my major five times. Well, well, <laughs> they, they, they might learn from you because you you are interdisciplinary, <laughs> and uh, you you uh, probably the reason you have such accomplishment as a scholar because you change your discipline a couple of times. 
I know, but for some for some people, but those in a yeah, traumatic life, they see that's the only myself and I can I can I can witness and also experience for mm -hmm. myself. That's why when I was in a graduate school and uh, in China, another another and a fellow student, a graduate student, and uh, uh, ask uh, uh, told me that oh, wow, you have a uh, lots of uh, rich, uh, very very rich and experience. Mm -hmm. I would be like you, but I I told him if I we just uh, change right, change uh, to each other, then probably you will not uh, you will never uh, live in my life and I uh, agree. Right? Yeah, okay. it's a uh, it, it's uh, not a copyable. It's a uh, yeah, yeah, one that, person's a, career path, life stories yeah. cannot be duplicated in any way. Yeah. Oh, everybody is unique. And final question: and yeah. uh, any books, particularly history books, and or history movies, you enjoy and you would recommend to our audience? Yeah, for the history book, and I think the the best book I I would like to read and uh, again, again and again is, and also what I like to recommend is uh, still in the Sima Guangs and the uh, Zhi a comprehensive and mirror in a setting and governing governance. That's the book, mm. and I I have read and uh, several times, and I uh, still and uh, I love that when I have time, I want to read it. Uh, the biggest reason uh, or the biggest uh, uh, merit or credit of that book is, uh, is the pragmatism of that book. And uh, that book is a uh, attempt to uh, uh, connect the past and uh, to the present. So it's want to use the history as a mirror, right? To and uh, tell uh, or give the lesson to the present people. And uh, so I think that I'm still uh, impressed and also and are still and uh, influenced by that book uh, even now and uh, in all my researches. And I want to I don't want to uh, focus on uh, writing a history book and uh, or history project uh, simply in uh, on the past and uh, right uh, some somewhere in the past. But I want to uh, look at look uh, use a book to look into the future. Yeah, that's thank you. Kind of yeah, fact, definitely, definitely the most outstanding recommendation. It's a heavy lifting though. It's very thick. Very yeah. book and a very uh, heavy volumes. Book. Yeah, yeah. I, I would recommend you know Professor Jonathan Spence, uh, the Chinese history books. They are much more entertaining, but uh, yeah, yeah, obviously yeah. they are not as you know yeah. serious uh, yeah. as uh, Sima Guang's Zizhi Tongyan. But I appreciate your recommendation. Well, we're just uh, about run out of time. I really okay. appreciate your time, Professor Fong, to come to the show, and uh, I learned a lot. And I would definitely to, to go back to my bookshelf and uh, just take one volume of Zhi Tongjian and to, to enjoy it. <laughs> Again, Professor Fong, Professor Chang Fong, Professor of History from the University of Minnesota Duluth. Thank you so much for your time and I really appreciate you have come to our show. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, Lawyer Wang and uh, Mr. Wang for your invitation. I really like this program. I think that I wish the program uh, uh, will become uh, more popular and more famous in, uh, in the future. Thank yeah. you, Professor Fong. Aloha. See yeah. you next time. Yeah, see you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.